video provided by Jim to make sure I wasn't screwing anything up and everything looks good. I did decide to go ahead and turn it so I'm actually going to be cutting the uh, the front ends of the paper. So I was looking at this edge before I'm going to be cutting this edge right now. So I've got it all set up. Um, what I did was I have a lot of margin on this side but I don't want to take too much off. But if you can see the title page there, see that brown? That's all the acidic damage that has taken over the years. It actually had a, uh, a leather cover and where the leather cover uh, came over the book end, or and the book board and made contact with this page. It, uh, it was the leather or the way it was processed or the dye uh, did a lot of damage to the paper. So I'm going to start there and um, does that look crooked to you? Yeah, that's crooked. So I'm going to start there and hopefully cut everything even to uh, the lowest cut or the lowest uh, torn out bit of paper there. But first I'm going to see if I can even it up. Fortunately, no one's watching live, so I don't have to worry about them getting bored. Alright, let's see. better. Alright, so hopefully now I've got it all evened out, I will not be cutting this crooked. Now I know this is a different kind of uh, way to cut the edges of the paper, um, but Jim came up with it on his own and um, from what I can tell it works really well, so let's see how it goes. He's always saying to clear these out of the way, but yeah, you can see the difference there, the paper that uh, hasn't been exposed to a lot of acid over the years and paper that has, so it's kind of crazy. And of course the paper that has is crumbling like nobody's business. It's really delicate. And there are ways you can shore that up and save it. But when it comes to the edges of the paper, you don't really need to save it if you've got a margin. I think I'm applying even enough pressure all the way across, so let me see if I can get this down to a rhythm. Yeah, I'm making a mess in my office today.
coming up really nice. For some reason I'm having difficulty being consistent at the very beginning of the cut. Maybe I'm trying to rush it too much. See what he means. still having issues cutting that. I wonder if it's because my first couple of cuts were unsteady. I'm going to use one of my brushes to keep the workspace clean. You've got to keep the cutting area clean or else you'll start getting jammed up by debris. When we're trying to cut a straight edge, that's the last thing we need. So it's four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I have zero viewers. I'm sure that's probably because everybody's off work and no longer has time to watch me. That's all right. when I double checked the video from Jim, I actually misread the web page from which he sells his wares. Uh, everything you see here aside from the book is made by Jim Palestra 
and he's at affordablebindingequipment.com, not affordablebookbindingequipment.com. So, I've conversed with him a little bit on each of the orders I've made, and he's a super nice guy. He really seems to love doing this and making stuff that's uh, affordable to non-corporation-sized companies. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm staying even to the cutting edge that I've already established. Yeah, my problem with that edge is that I'm not always coming in straight to begin with, so let me see if I can clean that up. some of those cuts. I think I've had too much junk crammed in there. Now, all my second cuts I've been doing.
some reason it's still cutting rough there. I wonder if I need to rotate this. It doesn't look like I've dulled the blade at all, but you never know. Alright, so what I think my problem is, I'm not applying equal pressure from beginning to end. And that could be because the uh, tool is at an angle to me, because I'm facing this way. So I'm going to try and see if I can turn it a little bit and improve the angle for better pressure over the whole stroke. workspace is just deep enough to accommodate this. So let me see if I can change. There we go. All right, now I'm facing it straight on. So this should help a bit more. I'd say that helped. Now I've only got like 600 left to do. Yeah. 
since nobody's in the chat and not asking any questions or watching, probably going to do most of this in silence. Um, but if you watch this later and you don't like that, let me know and I will change my ways for you because I'm that kind of person. Generally, though, I do my work in silence because I'm here alone except for the dog and the traffic. And I generally listen to a podcast. if I could get licensing to listen to a podcast out loud while I'm doing this. And the podcast creators and other fans would be able to sit there and watch me laugh about it as I listen to it on my own. I think that gets a little too Truman Show, doesn't it? Unfortunately, you're getting a bird's eye view of exactly what I spend a lot of my time during the day doing. Looking for my tools. I'm very skilled at setting them down somewhere and then not remembering where I set them down. It's my superpower. spot. I need to clean that up again. I can see where I'm starting to ramp up. So part of my problem is I'm not coming in straight across. I'm actually starting to come up at an angle with the blade. So let me see if I can rectify that.
and for this edge it won't be too bad because the back of the book is going to be rounded so eventually this edge of the book is going to be convex so if it's not perfect it's okay but you know what it belongs to me so if it's not perfect it's my own damn fault Got no one to blame but myself. Although I am the business owner, does that mean I should fire myself too? I suppose I can keep my job for a little while longer. There's always a learning curve with new tools. I'm tempted to take it outside and use the circular saw on it. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of cut that would make, but it would certainly be faster. It would probably ruin all of the sewing that took days to do. sticks. I think it's hilarious to tell people what they're made of and watch them cringe. But that's just my messed up sense of humor. Yeah. That end's getting chewed up. Slow and steady wins the race.
of these I'm shoving further down into the crease where I'm trying to cut instead. I should keep the Allen wrench that adjusts this in here at my table.
Isn't this exciting? This is exciting. I'm excited. Aren't you excited? That's why people watch Twitch, right? To watch someone doing something else at the pace of a glacier. Gripping that uh, plow is tough on the hands, man. I'm already starting to get carpal tunnel. Maybe I can speed it up with this. Yay! That's what we all want, right? Repetitive motion injuries faster. Yeah, part of the problem is I'm cutting into my uh, my wood as well. So even with nearly a half inch of uh, surface, I'm still cutting into my my clamps. This is why books, back before automation, were so expensive. So now you know. As soon as my husband gets home, he's going to see me playing with this and he's going to want to try.
right, so I see this is going to take some time. I will spare you the gory details of finishing the rest of this. Um, hopefully on Sunday, I will be going to go and pick up some very old books. Uh, we're going to go and see. There's a woman who's trying to liquidate her father's library, and she says she has things from the 1700s, which, of course, I'm very excited about. Um, so if anyone is interested in coming back to see what I've got, I suppose I will have what they call a uh, haul video. I'll show what I got from my trip to Maryland. And... Uh, let's say 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, well, you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I will see or not see you later.